Unbelievable, <laughs> Sean. Unbelievable. <sighs> Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Sean Lang here teaching us how to do some blast beats today. You were just playing a play along that. We're going to be releasing for everybody in Drumio at the end of the week, so it's going to be yours to do exactly what Sean did uh, on Friday, right? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> okay, welcome, everyone. Before we get going too much, i got a lot of stuff on my little uh, platform desk here because we're going to be giving away quite a bit of stuff, and we're not going to do it the same way we usually do it. We are going to now, uh, for this lesson in particular, we're going to give it away based on YouTube comments. A lot of people in the chats uh, say they don't have Facebook, so we're going to change it up a bit this time. What we're going to do, first off, let me just tell you what we're going to give away first. I'm going to let you catch your breath because you, <laughs> you look pretty tired. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> cool. First off, bass drum secrets. This is a pack that we've had, it's been selling now for about a year. Sean Lang's on there. Um, I'm one of the drummers on there. Jared Falk is another drummer on there. And we all teach different techniques. It's an awesome course, guys. Absolutely amazing. Online and physical copy is yours if you win, okay? Other thing we're going to give away is a free month of Drumio. We do that pretty much every week. Uh, and lastly, the cool thing that I'm really looking uh, forward to start giving away, check out this stick bag. Here, put it up at that gut cam there. Kyle, that thing is sweet. Me? Right here? Yeah, put it right there. Soon we'll get there. There, you there go. we go. Our own Drumio stick bags, embroidered and everything. Um, and uh, we've got a few of those here that we're going to give away. Open it up, check it out. Cool, so in order to do that, you guys gotta go to YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and where we release all of our free drumming videos for uh, Drumio is Free Drum Lessons. That's the channel name, definitely, or sorry, Free Drum Lessons, um, um, dot com. Uh, subscribe to our channel, and once this video gets released, it's gonna be released on Monday, we're going to pretty much open the doors for this contest all we're going to be doing is getting you guys to give us some sort of cool feedback, uh, positive feedback, hopefully. Um, <laughs> give us any kind of comment you want on the video. Like the video, obviously, too. And what we're going to do is on June 18th, which is next Monday, we're going to close it. And I'm going to choose randomly three winners from there. You're going to get either the drumstick bag, bass drum secrets, which is a $200 course, and a month free of Drumio. Or a month free of Drumio. I should kind of split those apart. So you're not just getting them all. Okay? <laughs> so does that make sense? On Wednesday, we're releasing this video on YouTube. For everyone here who uh, um, oh, needs some time to sign up, for YouTube or for anybody here who's missing out on this and watching this on the archive or in the YouTube as soon as we release it, like the video, subscribe to our channel, give us a comment on this video, guys. What's the best thing you like about, uh, about Drumio? Who's your favorite instructor? Um, anything? How long you've been playing drums for? Just give us a comment and I'm going to choose randomly from there. It's going to be a lot of fun. Cool. So, everybody who's a member, get your questions in right away if you can. It's going to be an awesome lesson. I talk too much, I've been told. So, Sean, <laughs> why don't you get, take it away and uh, teach us some blast beats? Alrighty, well, introduction to blast beats. Most of you probably know what blast beats are, but for those of you who don't, um, it's, it's very simple at its roots, um, but it gets a little bit trickier as you start bringing it up to the speed that it's useful at. So basically, um, it's going to be single strokes with the right and left hand, so right, left, right, left, right, left. Usually, uh, the right is going to be, well, rather than right and left, let's say lead hand and then slave hand or, or backbeat. So the lead hand is going to be either on a ride cymbal or a crash cymbal or a hi-hat. Typically, the ride cymbal or the hi-hat. So all the uh, demonstrations will be on either of those. So it's going to be single strokes between the two. Um, so your lead hand's going to be on the cymbal, and then your other hand's going to be on the snare. So kind of like just very, very simple. Um, and then obviously, you're going to uh, add the kick in there as well, which is going to be, again, with your lead hand and your lead foot. So it's very simple. Um, as you can see in uh, example number one, that's the traditional blast beat. There's another blast beat that we'll, we'll uh, cover after the traditional, but it's really, really simple, and uh, we should just probably go through the first example so you can see. Cool. And we do have smart beat technology. Going. Smart beat technology. So, if Kyle, you want to get that ready, you'll play, I guess, play it first, and we'll explain it later? Yeah, exactly. There we go. There we awesome. Go. So as you can see, it's just single stroke roll. Very, very simple. And at that speed, it's sort of boring too, but that's never the speed that we're going to play it at. Now, the way I was playing it, I was using one bass drum pedal. Um, as you get faster and faster and faster, you might find it a little bit difficult 
to keep up with one pedal, and so you might decide to use two. When I'm going really, really fast, I tend to just use two. It, it feels the most natural when I'm coming out of the double bass beat and I go into a blast beat. My feet can continue moving, and I just change the groove. So um, we should probably do it a little bit faster. Um, this won't be with the smart beat technology. No, no. Did you want a specific time? I can do a tempo or a click, or do you want to just go free? I'll just go for it. First, first I'll play it with a single pedal, and then I'll play it with a double pedal. And you, you'll also notice that the sound does waver a little bit. With a double pedal, you're not getting necessarily the same consistent tone. But when you're getting up to faster speeds and your kick is EQ'd to be very punchy, you might not all, you know, you might not really notice the difference. So um, I'm just going to play it single and then double. Okay, so that was really fast. <laughs> Maybe a little a, a in between speed? A little in between speed. <laughs> okay, sure. Sure. So for our in between speed there, halfway through, I went from single to double, and you probably heard a slight difference in tone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that is the traditional blast beat in kind of a 4-4 feel, and then there's also another version that we like to do in a triplet feel. And I think we have that on the smart beat as well. Yeah, number two, Kyle. It's always that awkward. <laughs> there we go. So there you go, it kind of had, you know, a triplet feel, a da 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 type feel. And again, this one can be with one pedal or two at that speed I played it at one. So now we'll speed it up a little bit so you can see how it's slightly different when we're going to uh, higher tempos, tempos that it'll be more used at. Do you mind if I give you a click for this? Because with a triplet feel, it's nice to have a pulse that you yes. can kind of refer the triplets to. Absolutely. <clears throat> Always it'll just sound like fast 16s. Okay, give me one second here. Do you want to pick a number? Let's say... Greater than 80? <laughs> greater than 80. <laughs> Let's say 140. Oh, man, you're ambitious. Here we go. 140 quarter notes. All right. I got this. <laughs> Okay, let's try it a little slower. <laughs> Unbelievable though. Okay, let's go 120. I'm down. Here we go. There we go. So with the faster tempo that we played there, you'll notice that I switched over to the ride and I was playing around a little bit with the bell. This is something that's really handy um, with tempos that get a little bit, or, or time signatures that get a little bit murkier at high tempos, like, like what we just did. So what I was actually doing is accenting the pulse. And it's a really common thing done in blast beats so that you know all the other musicians, when it's going full tilt, they still know where the actual count is. Because even though it's going crazy, you know, just wall of sound, there's still always a rhythm to it. Yeah. I actually um, was going to mention that when you were when you were doing it there, it, it made it come together a lot better at that fast tempo. Yeah, cool. Exactly. Now, actually, before we switch to the next blast, which is the hammer blast, um, I want to show you a little bit more things that you can do with accenting, just really, really, really quickly. Because if you just go into it, blast beats, just full bore without really having any sort of anchor, uh, you might find yourself a little bit lost, and your bandmates might might, might find themselves a little bit lost too. So. Um, just, just some quick ideas here, and it's going to be nice and slow for you as well. Okay. So this is first going to be the triplet. Mm -hmm. 
really simple. And this will be now the 4-4, the, the, the straight feel. So you're basically just accenting the quarter notes with the bell of the ride. Exactly. Cool. And you can do that from going with the hi-hats, switching to a crash or a splash, or even maybe just hitting it a little bit harder, more down by the edge rather than the tip. So there's a lot of different ideas you can use, but it's, it's always good to uh, make sure that you are in control of the rhythm and you're not just kind of blindly going as fast as you can. Awesome. Um, we had somebody here who just joined us and he asks, I'm just trying to look at it here, uh, Ku Flesh actually just joined us and says, what exactly is a blast beat and why is it called like a blast beat? A blast beat, it's, it's really just a barrage of notes that we've uh, kind of added a, a rhythm to. It's just a single stroke between the right and the left hand, and then you add the kick to whichever hand is your lead. Um, and it's going to be played at very fast tempos. You'll usually see it at 16th notes from uh, 180 BPM and up. You'll see it slower, but if it's any slower, it's more uh, called like a skank beat or a D beat or something like that. So it's, it's used in metal. And it's called a blast beat because it just sounds like a blast of sound. Like, if, I'll show you real quick again. It's just, the part, it's, it's what you play at your highest dynamic range of the song. When the song is really going nuts, you play that blast and everything just kind of gets glued together. Cool. And if you guys don't know already, this whole week is a heavy metal week. We're devoting Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday all to heavy metal. So I'll be seeing you again. So you'll be seeing Sean again for the, those who are members, but uh, I thought this is the most, uh, uh, that, in my opinion, it's one of the coolest ways to kickstart it off, the introduction to blast beats. So continue with hammer beats. Yeah, the next blast is called the hammer blast. And where the traditional blast beat had an alternating feel, right, left, right, left, right, left, the hammer blast is everything... Think of it everything at the same time. So it's going to be the kick, the snare, and the hat, or the ride, or, or whatever symbol, but all at the same time. And it sounds very simple, but when you start speeding that up faster and faster and faster, your hands have a tendency to want to flam, and your kick has a tendency to want to fall in between or before or after. So we will play the first example with the Smart B technology, and you'll see exactly what I mean. So by itself, it just sounds like a collection of shots. So like the traditional blast beat, we still need to raise the tempo. Otherwise, it's not really useful in any form of music that I would listen to, really, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, Want to do this one faster? We'll do it faster now. Yeah, why don't you give me a, a tempo to anchor me? Okay, let's do, uh, we'll start with um, 140. 140. These are eighth notes, so. Those are eighth notes? Yep. Good, I was thinking. Oh, no, 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 those are, those are quarters. But the, the exercise is at eight notes. I can go faster if you yeah, want. Yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Okay, now to get to blast speed. Blast speed. What about 200? Is that good for you? We'll do 200, and my comfort zone with the pedal we'll go to the double pedal and it, it's a little bit more comfortable for me so you'll notice a little switch in tone. Okay, here we go. I so, noticed you went to open style there for a little bit. Was that just an emotional decision or was there a t technique thing around that? Just changing the tone really. Uh, I didn't want you guys to get bored with the sound so we went from this to the, from the hi-hat, and we raised it up, again, another dynamic level, and went to the china. It, the, the hammer blast is a really nice blast, I find, to add to a crash cymbal or a china, whereas the traditional blast, I find, is nicer on uh, a softer sounding cymbal, like the hi-hat or the ride cymbal. Cool. So yeah, um, now we also have the triplet form of this, just kind of like we had with the, the traditional blast. Excellent. Number four, I believe, on the sheet.
So a little slow, feels a little bit more blasty, if that's a word. But I, I think that Dave's queuing up a faster tempo. I am. Me. 165? 165 triplets. So uh, we'll, we'll try it. We'll try it. I'll go to 160. There you go. Let's double the, double the tempo. Okay. Oh, yeah. Here we go. That was nice. a little bit fast for me, but as you noticed, I actually started changing the pattern I was doing with the symbol here. Um, one thing I like to do to, to relieve tension when you're going full bore and you feel like it's going to fall apart, rather than let it fall apart, I like to switch the ride pattern. So it was going at quarter notes rather than the triplets. And then another, another trick that I've come across, and you can look it up on YouTube, it's, I think we call it lazy blast beats or hybrid, hybrid blast beats, it's maybe one of our other videos, mm -hmm. is I actually switch hands and get this sort of weird uh, rudimental thing going on. I won't touch on that, just search it afterwards, and uh, it's, it's pretty fun. Cool. I'm going to do that one a little bit slower just to get a good medium ground there. And um, maybe do what you were talking about, going to different uh, voices, and then again accenting the quarter notes so you can hear it. Exactly. I'll go to 140. 140, let's do it. There we go. So I played around a little bit with the cymbals. Cool. Ludwig, uh, Lud Ludwig German says, I think I'd have a seizure if I tried that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe to start. Start slow. It would sound like a seizure, but once you kind of learn how to glue it all together and get it consistent, it starts sounding more like that. So how, how then do you develop that kind of speed um, and endurance? Because obviously you don't just start out by, especially with your left hand. No, it, it doesn't work. <clears throat> um, well, we've actually kind of added a, a small list here, um, which will be in the, uh, in the sheet music of uh, different beats that you can kind of use to go in between, you know, your regular, your, your comfort zone, basically, and then a blast beat, and then a comfort zone, and a blast beat. You're not going to get good just going all in, because it's just going to fall apart, and it's going to sound like, like one guy said, you know, like having a seizure, pretty much. So, um, one way that I've worked on my speed, and there's guys that are light years faster than me, and I'm pretty sure they, they do something very similar to this, is uh, you take a beat that you're comfortable with, and uh, you play that, at a tempo that you know that your, your your blast would be uncomfortable at, and you so you play, and when you feel like you're you're all psyched up, you do the blast on time, and when it starts to feel like it's falling apart, go back to the beat. Always keep it together. Always make sure it sounds like what's happening is what you intended to happen. If it feels like it's falling apart, it means you're spending too long on the blast. But it's good to alternate between the two. So I find I like to do maybe like three bars of a beat and one bar of the blast, and then go back. And this works for all blast. This really works for for any beat that you're trying to learn. You know, you learn it in short short bursts. I think Jared actually had a video on on bursts mm -hmm. recently. In short bursts, and you gradually make that burst longer until it's not a burst anymore. It's a phrase, and at that point, you have a lot more control over it. Excellent. So is that what you're gonna do here with number five, six, seven, and eight? I guess that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start with number five, and we will. Um, that's gonna be well suited to I think the traditional blast, and may, maybe actually what I'll do, um, kill two birds with one stone. We'll do number five and then we'll cut to the uh, straight version of the tradi traditional blast, alternate back to number five, and then do the straight version of the hammer blast, and go in between the two. Very cool. And let's maybe find a, kind of a medium tempo like um, 170, let's try that. Okay. While I'm getting this tempo, for all you guys in Drumio who are downloading the MP3s, you might notice that uh, number five, six, seven, and eight aren't in there, and that's because they're just the patterns that you can switch back and forth to. And as our, Sean already said, if you have your own grooves that you're already comfortable playing, um, then by all means, go for that. It's all about just going back and forth and building speed and endurance. Here's 170 for you. Yep. So this is going to start with number five, alternating between the traditional and the hammer. We'll close that just so it's not obnoxiously loud the whole time. simple but as you can see uh, that's really gonna work your, your ability to play that beat 
It's also going to challenge you to clean up when you come into it and when you come out of it because it's not enough to be able to master a beat by itself. You have to know how to transition into it and out of it without sounding like you're going to drop the mm -hmm. ball. And you got to be able to play it when you want to play it. A lot of times for me when I practice blots, which is not very often, I have to ramp myself up to it. Yeah. What good is that in the middle of a song? if you gotta... Well, and, and that, that's actually perfectly valid and everyone, no matter what their skill level, will have to warm up <laughs> to, you know, really fast tempo stuff. Um, but, you know, once you're, once you're as warmed up as, as you can get, that's pretty much your peak ability. So um, always remember, this stuff is never going to feel natural if it's the first thing you do <laughs> when you wake up or the first thing you do when you sit in front of your kit. You need to warm up to it a little bit too. And these are actually great exercises to do that as well. Cool. Let's do number six, going back and forth the same way. Yep. I'm going to slow down a little bit just so people can follow along a little easier, easier. for me in particular. Now, I really like number six. Um, it's good for slow tempos if you want to work out a single, your single pedal. And it's great for fast tempos if you want to work out uh, your, your double pedal as well. Because as, as you're going, your, your, your pedal is consistent. It's, the, it's totally solid the entire time. So it actually makes it a little bit easier to transition between the, the groove, which is the slow part, and the blast, which is the fast part. So it, it just really, really helps. And it'll actually make your double bass playing more consistent as well. because it's going to be used to carrying the beat. Um, a lot of us, when we learn double pedal, we learn it in you know how to add it into little short bursts. And if you try to build off that, your playing's going to be all wonky. So do, doing something like this is also a great exercise for your for your double pedal as well. Very cool. Yeah. So we have number seven, and number seven is triplet based. So we're obviously going to use the triplet forms of the traditional blast and the hammer blast. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. Um, it's totally worth mentioning. We're not going to cover it today, I don't think, but. Um, uh, it's actually a really good idea to practice it the other way around. So go from a straight beat to a triplet blast or a triplet beat to a straight blast. That's going to really, really work on your understanding of tempos and your, your internal rhythm and it's great to do. Cool. What tempo would you like? Uh, this might actually be okay. A 155? Number 7? Triplets? Yeah. Are we doing uh, transitions into the triplets there? Yeah, it's going to be number 7, triplet form of traditional and triplet form of hammer blast. Here we go. I just realized that's going to sound really, really fast, so we, we should slow that down a little bit. <laughs> okay, let's go to 120. 120. Okay, here we are. And I know there's, there's probably some of you guys out there who have been doing this stuff forever and you're probably really fast. Probably some, some of you are faster than me, but playing it at that tempo feels so awkward that you should probably practice it too. Mm -hmm. like that, that I was, I was, it was actually taking everything in me to keep that together because I'm so used to just blasting through now. But you always want to be good at slower tempos as well as faster tempos. Exactly. Last so, but not least. Last but not least, number eight, the big double kicker. There's a lot more bass drum happening here. It's all 16th notes. Um, so yeah, we will uh, do this with the, the straight version of the traditional blast and the hammer blast. Drew, would you like to give me a tempo? Let's go back to 155, I guess. 155, okay, sounds good. Here we go.
again, great practice because that's an awkward tempo. Yeah, well, first off, I, I was going to say, can you do it again? On this uh, uh, notation, oh, you have snare right. two and four. I got gotcha. you. Let's do it. Okay, so introduction to blast beats. This is what this lesson is. Um, for me, I mean, I'm not a blaster myself. I'm sure a lot of people out here are, are new to blasting as well. A lot of people on chat are kind of asking, what is a good tempo you would start at as a, at a minimum to say this is a blast? Like, what tempo would you start at before? Well, with every drum pattern, you want to learn what kind of makes it up. So before you even try to, to play it or play any of these, I would take the traditional blast, number one, look at number one, and just put it together like this. Really, really simple. And once you get to an actual rhythm or a speed, keep that going and see if you can keep it consistent, if you can. Keep raising it. There, there's no uh, one tempo that you need to start at. You just find out where your ability takes you and then start working on it from there. Cool. It's a it's really, really simple beat. It's just mainly all in the repetition and maintaining it and making sure it sounds like a constant blast rather than just, you know, a single point in time, you know, just a shot. Mm -hmm. And a question that I have before we get into the questions from the uh, members there. What's uh, when do you know when to play either one? Like, do you is there a certain song style that requires the hammer blast over the traditional blast, or is it like an emotional decision? Uh, that that that's a good point. Um, I find I tend to go for the traditional blast if there's um, a moment in the song where the guitars are just there's no specific rhythm. It's maybe just long chords, like every single bar is one chord, or just just something where there's 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 no like definitive picking sound, you know, no chug. Uh, it's all just just da 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 the whole time rather than da 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 da. If, if you guys sort of know what I mean, it's mm -hmm. obviously none of these beats are really applicable in anything except for metal or very experimental music. So um, that's why the traditional blast is so prevalent in in black metal. Um, those of you who are familiar with black metal, it's usually just like the guitars are sort of a wash of sound, and uh, so the blast beat, the tr the traditional blast fits in really really well because it kind of digs right in. Whereas the hammer blast. The hammer blast is really just bop, 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 you know, think, think of it as actually hammering down the, the, whole, the whole song. So um, if, if, they, if you had a, a guitar part where it was like, you know, chug, 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 like da, 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 very, very machine-like, it's really, really good to just throw in a hammer blast and it totally just glues everything together and makes it feel very uh, brutal. Cool. So. When you were doing that little demonstration there, you're using your right hand on the snare, and it looked like you were playing either sixteenths on there and then eights on here, half the speed on your um, on your right hand. Is that a technique that you do quite a bit? It's something that, that, that I do I when I'm trying to keep track of the general pulse or the rhythm of the song. There's there's sometimes where you you wanna go full bore and uh, and so that's you know what you gotta do. But sometimes and I do it quite a lot, is I just like to actually keep the quarter note count going. Something for people to, you know, bob their head to if it's, if it's just sort of like the entire time you're kind of just like yeah this is really heavy and really fast oh there's the beat mm -hmm. oh, okay all right um but you obviously want to be good at both do you want to give us an example of that again i know you kind of talked about it a little bit but we have a bit of time if you want to show us how you would change it up a little bit and also moving from constants to the quarters or something like that yeah absolutely well i'll, I'll just play around a little bit and i'll show you Excuse me. There we
So that was pretty slow. I'll play that a little bit faster now. Okay. But it's it's going to sound more meaningful in an actual song. Cool. Okay, so we have a bunch of questions mm -hmm. that I want to get to, but before I do, is there anything else that you wanted to teach or show a different example of about the blast? You did a pretty good job of explaining it. I think it's just a matter of building up that endurance. That's um, all it is. It's it's really simple. There's there's no uh, there's no groove to it. There's no intense syncopation. All that stuff you can add to it afterwards on your own. Um, one th one thing that's good to practice once you're used to playing the hammer blast and the, and the traditional blast within the confines of a song is try switching between both. So traditional blast, hammer blast, traditional blast, hammer blast. And there's such uh, such different feels. You know, one's an alternating feel and one's a, a dead-on feel that it will really throw you off and it's a great, great tool or a great practice thing. So you have to show us that now. We'll try it. Yeah. Alrighty. And with this one, I like to keep the double pedal going because again, it provides an anchor and my hands really just do the rest. So you almost have this little hiccup spot where you're switching between the traditional and so it's basically ride snare, ride snare, ride snare, ride snare, snare, snare. So you go da 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 and that part is really tricky to get and it can almost sometimes sound like a mistake when that's actually how it's supposed to sound. Um, and what also can make the transition easier is if you throw a little fill in because it's such a drastic feel change. Your hand goes from being here to one other 16th note it's right here or here or, or whatever symbol you're using unless you're, unless you're uh, leading with the left hand. So I'll show you uh, just a basic little fill you can do as well. So just snare, snare, kick, kick, tom, tom, or whatever, kick, kick. And it really just glues it all together. Excellent. Cool stuff, man, and a lot of fun. Um, for everybody who's just joining us, obviously we were talking about introduction to blast beats, but at the very beginning of the lesson, I mentioned we're going to be giving away some stuff, and I just wanted to go over that again, just in case you're just joining us, because we always do on a Monday. Basically, on Wednesday, this video is going to be uploaded to YouTube, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to open it up for uh, the contest. Basically, I'm going to be choosing random comments from there, so like the video and submit a comment on there. Anything positive around, about Drumio, maybe who's your favorite instructor, what's your favorite lesson so far, uh, what would you like to see coming up on Dramia? I'm going to take all those and I'm going to pick randomly three. Very easy. Anybody can sign up. I mean, you don't have a Facebook account, that's fine. YouTube is very easy to do. And we're going to be giving away Bass Drum Secrets, which is like huge. It's a 15 disc course box set. Um, and it's got Sean Lang in there. Uh, I'm one of the drummers in there. Sean, uh, Jared Falk's the other guy in there. And it's great. Sean teaches a bunch of this stuff, a bunch of different blast beats, and a lot of cool stuff on there. It's pretty intense. Yeah, and it's pretty intense. It's $200 course, but you can get it for free. Also, again, we got our own Drumio drumstick bags. And uh, the guy who makes this, actually, he's offered to make us some more, too. So we're going to have a lot of these. And if you want some and you don't think you're going to win or you might not win, you can always call me up or email me, davidrumio.com. We can even get your name on here if you want. And we'll figure something out. But anyway, nice. I'm going to give away that as well and a month free for Drumio. Okay? So let's get to some questions now. We've got 20 minutes. Sorry, one more thing I wanted to add. That play-along that Sean played in the very beginning, we're going to be releasing that as the heavy metal play-along this Friday. As everybody knows who's already involved with Drumio, every week we release a new play-along. That wasn't your song this time, although it sounded like it nope. could have been with how good you were playing it. Um, it is a play-along that Nate Savage has written. Nate's one of our new guys here at Drum Well, he's not new, but he's doing a lot of the Drumio stuff now with us, and uh, he's recording a play-along every week. So uh, it's going to be really cool, and I will release that on Friday for everybody on 
Dramio. Okay, cool. So let's get down to some questions here, starting at the very, very top. <clears throat> Okay, this one actually is a little bit off topic, so we'll get to that one at the very end. We'll go with the, this one from David Dev. He says, when I play the double bass at faster tempos, the sound is punchy and precise. However, when I play the double bass at slower tempos, my pedals tend to do some rebound that ruins the feel of the beat. Any tips on how to deal with that? At slower tempos, the technic you use is going to be drastically different from fast tempos. Uh, we covered that a little bit in, um, I, I think it was a public lesson, the developing double bass. Yeah. Um, so there, there's a lot in there already, but basically, the faster you play, you're, you're utilizing your twitch muscles, mainly. Some guys won't, but you, you probably are. Your, your twitch muscles and your ankle muscles. And the slower you play, you're going to use more of the whole leg. And so it might just be um, partly just being aware of uh, how you're playing so that when you're playing slower, you can use your whole legs, because it's really easy to be solid playing slow with your whole legs. And when you're playing faster, you can use the ankles and, and kind of the, the twitch muscles so that you can kind of control there. So that usually ends up making it so that you're actually playing on different places on the pedal. Um, if you're playing slower, it's easier to play farther up on the pedal. If you're playing faster, it's easier to play farther back. So these are things that you need to be aware of. And uh, w once you're aware of these things, it's actually going to be a whole lot easier. Cool. And I, I like to think of it the same way as if you watch any drummer playing a slow beat, his arm for those quarter notes are going up quite a bit. It can be all arm and it's fine, but the minute you start playing fast, it's going to be a lot more wrist. A lot more wrist and fingers, and it's the same concept with your feet. Uh, very common question we get, actually. So, um, Okay, this one's from Nicholas. Nicholas Stray, or Stangeland. Sorry if I pronounce that wrong. Okay, guys, I have a double pedal, but it's difficult as heck. So here's my question. How do you practice to get such speed, independence, and control with your feet? Uh, good luck with my name, by the way. Ah, I think I did all right. Maybe. Well... Bass Room Secrets is a great place to start. Mm -hmm. um, so you might want to win that. So why don't, you, why don't you try to win that? That'll be good for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, there's, there's a whole slew of, uh, that's right, a slew of uh, exercises out there to, to do that. But basically it's going to be starting slow and uh, ramping up faster and faster. But also, like we said with these blasts, is throwing in little bursts until you get comfortable with it. And then pushing the limit of that, pushing the boundary. Just, just like going to the gym, you're... You're trying to do small bursts of things that you normally wouldn't be able to do for long periods of time. And the more you do that, the greater your overall ability becomes. Mm -hmm. But cool. that, that, that question, the answer to that question is, is really uh, months and years of, of work and there's a bunch of videos out there already for that. Key thing also to remember is just don't get discouraged. You know, it's a journey, it's a long journey sometimes, but just don't get discouraged with it, keep practicing. I know with, with me watching some of the drummers that I like to watch, uh, it's really discouraging if you can't do what they do. But Yeah, but... Even those guys, uh, when they first started trying out, or even maybe for a couple of years, they, they couldn't make it sound good. So just, just remember that. Yeah, exactly. Everyone starts somewhere, and wherever you are, there's been tons of people that have come before you, and they've been able to um, get to where they want to go. So you can too. Yeah. Joy Whitechuck says, uh, hey, Dave and Sean. Hey, uh, Joey. He says, great lesson. I'm just wondering if you could suggest some songs that are fairly slow on the blast beats. I just want to practice some, but I'm not very fast yet, and I'm trying to get into the whole metal drumming uh, scene and all that. So, Sean. The thing with blast beats is they're usually meant to be played fast. Th there will be some songs out there with slower blast beats. I know Slayer has a lot of... Uh, it's, they're, they're thrash beats, really, but you could use them to practice uh, your blast beats if you want. So just, just ser search a couple songs and you'll probably find a lot of stuff that's basically just, you know, kick, snare, kick, snare, kick, snare. And that's basically just a slowed down blast beat. Um, another thing is find some songs that maybe feel too fast and play to them slow and comfortably like you would a, r a regular rock song and then just add blasts in and then pull out when it, when it becomes uncomfortable. Back to the whole burst thing again. Might be a cool idea too to play blasts as a fill because everybody has, okay, here comes a fill. Totally blast for that and that's a good one bar you know could be one bar but it's a great way to mm -hmm. implement them and actually this uh this play along track is going to be really good for that because it, it's at a tempo where you can just rock out and then just throw in a little blast and go back to rocking out again because it's got sort of that that classic metal feel which is like almost hard rock but then it's got the metal so it's, it's really good for that yeah cool um this one's from Connor, Connor Byron says, uh, blast beats, do you use more finger technique or wrists? This is a really good question because I saw you at one point switch to fingers, um, but you're also so powerful with your wrists doing that. So what, what, what are your... Uh... It, it's kind of a mix. Um, uh, I intentionally use fingers, but my practice regimen isn't as good as it should be, and so my fingers tire out quicker than I would like. So 
usually I'll start out with this you know, great, nice, clean finger technique. And if I'm doing a lot of blast heavy stuff, I'll usually resort to, by the end of it, I'm using my wrists. And then, uh, so it, it, it's a little bit of both. Um, and it's, it's good to actually be decent at both because uh, once your fingers tire out, your body goes to the next largest muscle, which is your wrist. Mm -hmm. um, and there are some crazy drummers out there. Um, I think his name's Mike Smith. Uh, he's the drummer for Suffocation, I think. And the guy's blast beats like every hits up here. Like so, there, there's no one way to do it. If you can do it without hurting yourself, that's great. But the guy's like blasting really, really fast, and it's coming up here. I mean, he's ripped. So maybe that's part of it. He's really fit. Yeah. So if you're really fit and you can get that going, that's cool. Um, but for me. It's, it's kind of a combination of fingers and then a little bit of wrist, and as I tire out, it becomes more wrist. And I know that I, uh, I haven't been you know, eating right or practicing properly if by the end of a show, my, my whole body is sore, because you, know, you, you can't pull out of a song simply because you can't you know, get to the right speed. So by the end of the song, if I haven't practiced or I'm not feeling good, my whole body is sore, because my whole body is getting into it. And you, you, can, you can see that sometimes. If you watch a drummer who's just totally not up to it, and his whole body's getting into it. And, Mm -hmm. Do you want to just show a quick example there, maybe, of a speed of you going from wrist and then one of fingers, just so people can see the difference of what it looks like, also, if, it, if there is any difference in sound or anything like that? Yeah, I'll, there will definitely be a difference in sound. It's a little bit harder to have power when you're playing with, with uh, fingers. And uh, fingers j tends to be more French grip, where your, your thumbs are kind of up. That's, fr <laughs> that's French grip, right? <laughs> yeah, that's Everybody's French confused. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then wrist, I find it's easier to do uh, German. Okay. So uh, we'll mess around with that. So it's, it's not something that I do purposely. And so it sounds a little bit awkward when I actually make the switch consciously. It's kind of a, a body thing. Your body will say, ah, oh, the, the small muscles are tired, and it just kind of makes the decision for you, and you don't even really realize. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, and this is a little, a little tip that I have for you guys, um, when I'm practicing my single stroke rolls, a lot of times I'm listening to the pulse and feeling the pulse, and if you were to split that over two drums, it's hard to hear and feel that because you're hitting two different voices, and it's harder to think about that. So even just uh, an, an exercise that Sean was just doing right there, and I thought about this because there was no bass drum, and it was just alternating a single stroke with the ride cymbal and the snare drum. That's a great place to get that uh, uh, feel for playing a single stroke roll on time, alternating just by two doing two different voices because a lot of times you try and listen to the dot 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 and if that's not there it'll throw you off and it all just bleeds in together and you can't even really tell the difference after a while exactly exactly so if you're really having problems maybe even strip it down without the bass drum and just start with that um, okay got another question here from David he says whenever I play double bass at 80 beats per minute or higher using the flat foot technique after a minute my feet are so um, sorry after a minute or so my feet tend to slide to the right and end up on the foot plate of the pedals and I lose momentum and the beaters just fall dead. What should I do to prevent that from happening? We kind of need to know, um, like 80 beats per minute, are you playing 16th notes or 30? Sorry, you said 180 beats per minute. 180, okay. Sorry, David. Then, that, then that's going to be six, uh, 16th notes. Um, that's again, uh, really just being aware of, um, of where your feet are and what they're doing. I had a pretty bad problem when I first started, if you guys want to switch to the foot cam re real quickly. Um, I started doing my double bass. I would find that by the time I was getting tired, my heels were on the inside. I don't. I'm think, thinking back now. I don't even know how I did this, but a lot of my playing, my heels weren't even on the board, and uh, so it wasn't good. And I actually had to, like, consciously think about doing this and actually look at the pedals to make sure that my feet were where they wanted to be. And then, if they weren't, make that make the micro adjustment consciously. Eventually, your body kind of learns, you know, muscle memory and such, learns that you know, this is where you want them to be, and this is where they'll stay. But it's all about making the micro adjustments consciously um, and just making everything very intentional. So if, if your foot ends up down there, it just means you're probably not paying attention to it. So you need to learn to pay attention to it until it becomes second nature that if it falls down, your body will adjust because this doesn't feel com comfortable and you'll adjust back up. Mm -hmm. Cool. 
Hopefully that helps you, David Ivan. Sorry for trolling you there. Um, okay, next one. This is from Dirty Wendell. It says, hey guys, I'm loving the metal week already, and it just started. Uh, when playing metal shows at such a fast tempo for a long set, it would take care of a lot of endurance, or take a lot of endurance. What would you say to do to keep relaxed and maintain a solid uh, solid beat for the whole show? And this is a great question for you, because, I mean, I've seen you do a live show, and you're just full throttle the whole time. I usually am, and I usually feel like I'm with the throw up afterwards. <laughs> so it's, <laughs> no, no matter how you slice it, it's... It's still going to be, you know, a lot of work physically, and uh, you basically just want to practice staying relaxed. Um, so this starts with your practice at home. If if you're if you're kind of worried about that and you have a show coming up, chances are it's still going to be the same as it's always been. Um, so it it all starts with how you practice and how you play, working, making sure that you're utilizing fingers and wrists rather than arms because that's going to tire you out, um, and also working on switching between slow and fast and slow and fast, and then eventually just seeing how long you can continue fast before you cramp up and, and it falls apart. Give yourself a break. Go back into it. It's, it's all about, you know, really, it's, it's physical conditioning with, with stuff of this speed and this magnitude. Can you quickly then show him uh, your one blast beat that you do, taking the traditional and um, or something similar and using, I think, the flam tap, or sorry, yeah, the flam tap, I think it was. Ah. Because yes. I know you've taught this, like you said in the beginning, you taught this on a YouTube video. I think it was one of our uh, live ones. He's also taught it on the uh, bass drum secrets. But if you can quickly mention it, we got a few minutes here. I'd love yeah. to see it. This is the hybrid blast beat, and this came out out of a necessity to play these faster tempos that my guitarists were writing in, in these new songs. And I was like, guys, I can't do this. I'm like, but it sounds so cool. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to figure this out. Um, I think some other guys have discovered this as well because it's rudiments, and rudiments are the base of all music. But it's it's all hammer blast actually. It's, it's not traditional. Traditional is always going to be alternating. Um, so I'll show you. I'll, I'll start by just playing a regular hammer blast, and when I get tired, I'll show you what happens or how I how I switch it up so I can kind of keep it going. That's awesome. So you basically flam tap and keeping that flam on the one of the symbols to keep that pulse going, but yet you're allowed to keep them those sixteen. Exactly. It, it it keeps that quarter pulse going, but it also keeps the blast going. So um, if you want to keep that total balls to the wall, just crazy feel of you know everything going at the same time, this this technique isn't really gonna keep that going. But if you really want to accent more of the the rhythm of the song, this <laughs> is great for that. Um, any of you who don't know my band, it's First Rain. Check it out. I do this a lot in uh, in, in First Rain. And if you want to search a song on YouTube that I that I play along to called Severed Inception, we did it for the Casey Drums video shoot. Um, uh, the intro riff is totally reliant on uh, on this technique, actually. So uh, I was going to see if you had it on there if you can play us out with Severed Inception. I don't have it drumless, but um, I'll, I'll I'll play the uh, the. the Oh, I'm losing my train of thought. I'll play the the, the drum pattern um, for you, so you can kind of see, you know, how I'm actually accenting the rhythm. And the, the, the guitar pattern is da 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 da. da. It's kind of like you know, very kind of sporadic and all over the place. And if I'm going to add a blast to that, that's going to sound totally just like you know free jazz, and it's not free jazz. So what I what I do is I use this you know hybrid technique, and I accent all the different shots, and it kind of sounds like this, you know, without the music, obviously. So just like that, guys. It's just pretty, like that. It's pretty easy. You know, nope. just to figure where the guitar riffs are. Since, since uh, I'm, I'm blasting, but I'm, I'm still adding, you know, actual rhythm in there. And so that's kind of why I like to do it. 
Cool. Okay, we got time for one more question, and then I am going to insist that you play us out. And even though you don't, you don't have Severed Inception without drums, maybe you can play with the drums behind there. Or you also had a subdivision song that you might be able to do. Is that drumless as well, or both of those have drums? Both have drums. Why don't, why don't we do Severed Inception? It makes more sense. Yeah, sounds good. So we'll get you to play us out for that. But before I go, I'm going to ask one more question here. Sorry if there's anybody who I missed uh, questions for. In fact, you know what? I'll do two more questions. But if there's anybody who we miss, I apologize. Mondays are the only lesson where it's tough to get all the questions in, in the hour. It's public. We have a lot more people involved um, but every day throughout the week like I always say when we do our lessons with just the members we make sure we get to all the questions okay um, first off actually here's a quick one Mikey Mayhem wants to know sorry Mikey I'm going to throw you under the bus here Mikey Mayhem really wants to know what kind of shoes you're wearing um, he loves them these I have no idea what they are they were, they were the cheapest shoes I could find at Urban Outfitters they were like $45 Canadian and they get you speeds like that so I'm gonna have to go get myself a pair of those. Um, Drumjack says, uh, Drumjack52 says, hey Sean, um, do you have a preferred pedal style when doing blast beats, uh, flat foot, heel up, whatever? Usually with, with blast beats, the bulk of the tempo is being held by the hands, usually, unless it's, uh, you know, something like a bomb blast, which we haven't covered. Um, so generally, um, I'm gonna be heels up for most blast beats, because they're, they're doing half of what the hands are doing unless you do a, a bomb blast where it's basically matching what the hands are doing. And th then I'll be doing flat foot. Cool. Question here from C-Lock says, Hey, Sean and Dave, for the traditional blast beats, is it okay to start the single stroke with the hand on the snare? In other words, beginning alternating hand and foot instead of foot and hand? Uh, that's actually a completely different type of blast beat. So, yes, it's just not traditional. Um, uh, I can't remember what it's called, actually. At, at the moment, but so that that's also totally valid. I'd probably still want to get good at doing the, the traditional as well. Yeah, and you do talk about a number of different blast beats on the bass drum secrets as well yep. as your hybrid blasts, which Dr. Pepper was when you were teaching that. He's like, oh, I learned that on on bass drum secrets. So you also nice. have one in triplet form as well that you. Dr. Have. Pepper, you should make a video of you of you playing them. I'd like to see that. Yeah, Dr. Pepper, do Post it. it up. Um, Okay, a site, okay well, this one here is from Kipriotum, Kipriotum says, uh, can I have more info on the stick bags? Guys, the stick bags here, Drumio embroidered stick bags. Uh, we have a guy, uh, Guisep, his name is, he doesn't have his website up yet, but as soon as he does, I'll give you all the contact info, but he's making us stick bags now. Um, that if you want, email me, davidromeo.com. We can get an order for you. You can even get your name embroidered on there too if you wanted. Custom, pretty cool stuff. And uh, obviously I'm giving one away here. So again, like the video on YouTube on Wednesday, June 18th, guys, which is next Wednesday, uh, next Monday, sorry. That's the cutoff for all the comments before I choose a winner, obviously, because we're choosing a winner on that Monday lesson. Makes sense, right? Um, okay, cool. Ready to play us out? Sure, let's do it. I take that out. Let me just, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is the right track. Uh, if I stop halfway through, you'll know that it was the wrong one, and I'll just apologize early. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, thank you very much. Sean, again, as always, it's a lot of fun. Always a pleasure. Um, Sean Lang, guys, drummer for, uh, for First Rain, drummer for Seven Year Storm. He also does all the lessons here with us uh, as well. This whole week is on heavy metal. For all you drum members, make sure you're out for that. Monday or Tuesday, I'm doing uh, beginner uh, heavy metal. Chris Warrenke is out on inter uh, intermediate day, which is Wednesday. And then you're out again on Thursday uh, for more good stuff. So I'll see you guys all around there again. Thank you so much for coming out, guys.